Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today's video marks about one year since the version one release of our EMB tuner app used to control ASI controllers. And today we are going to be releasing quite a big update and we figured we should probably give uh, an updated demo as quite a few things have changed. This app can be found in the app store if you're on iOS device or in uh, the Android play store. So getting started here, um, the app is used to control ASI controllers that were tuned specifically by us. If you got your um, controller from a different, different dealer, they may have their own app, uh, but this one in particular is for controllers bought from us or tuned by us. Uh, back 2000, 4000, or 8000, all works the same, and of course is always free to our customers. Another great feature is this app works com uh, completely independently of internet. So as you can see, I'm in airplane mode. The functionality will remain the same. So um, a little bit of history. I nor Cole have any um, sort of formal coding experience and take any classes on it. So we definitely appreciate your patience with any bugs or like weird UI stuff that doesn't look quite right. I have probably 600 hours into this app, but um, I'm still learning, still trying to figure it out, make things better as I have time. If you find bugs in it, please email us and let us know and we will do our best to fix it. So the very first thing I recommend anyone do when they come to our app is be familiar with the parameters definitions and the troubleshooting and proper usage section. Those two places are basically going to tell you everything you need to know about app functionality, Bluetooth connection, as well as what every individual parameter does. So, speaking of parameters, let's start there. We'll head into our controllers parameters section. You can see immediately you are going to now come to the device connection screen. So, uh, if there is no device here, you would swipe down and it'll scan. And if no device still um, shows up there, your Bluetooth may be off or you do not properly have permissions enabled for this app. You do need to have location permissions enabled for it to work properly. So let's click on eBike here and let's get connected. It's going to load our data in and take us to our first screen here, which is our ride parameters. Uh, these are basically very similar to what is on uh, the egg rider app. And these are basically what is hard coded into the controller. So if your egg rider is not turned on, these will be the values it defaults to. If the egg rider is on, it will default to whatever values you've programmed in that app. And uh, for anyone who doesn't know, the egg rider is not our product, which is why there isn't cohesion between our app and controlling the egg rider. Um, so those two things are independent of each other. We just use this simply as a display to go with our kit. So moving down the list, these are all things um, that are pretty self-explanatory. You have your power, uh, your phase current, which um, depends on which controller you're running. Um, right here, it'll let you know what your limit is based on whether you're running a 4,000 or an 8,000. You also have your regen ratio, which is basically just how much regen breaking you're going to have. Here at the very bottom, you have field beaconing. If you don't know what that is, it's basically... Um, it reduces the magnetic field and allows you to have a higher top speed. It's a pretty dumbed down version of what it is, uh, but again, parameters definition will give you more information. One big feature down here, uh, a lot of people ask, <clears throat> my bike doesn't work without the egg rider on. This toggle um, just kind of gives you a good visual for, for what's going on with that. So if this is enabled, uh, basically your throttle will not work without the egg rider on. So you can see mine's off. However, since the switch is disabled, if I go ahead and turn the throttle, you can hear there's power. If I enable this and twist the throttle again, nothing happens. And again, I can turn that off and you will hear it again. So uh, basically, if you want to have two different setups where you turn your key on and leave the egg rider off, uh, you can set these power levels here and keep this off. Um, and then once you turn your egg rider on, these will default to whatever is on there. Maybe someone likes that setup. Um, it's also helpful if your egg rider ever breaks and you still want to use your bike. Um, there's, there's a whole host of reasons you may want to do that. Uh, moving on to the next one, this is just the general parameters section. So 
Uh, we'll just run down the list here. Starting at the top, we have disable brake cutouts. This one, pretty self-explanatory what it does. Um, there are sensors on your brakes when you pull them. By default, it will stop power from going to the uh, motor. However, if you have this disabled, as I do, and you watch your brake one live voltage down there, you can see I'm pulling the brake, and when I twist the throttle, it still spins. However, if I have this turned off, and I pull the brake and twist the throttle, nothing happens. Uh, moving down here, we have our regen source. So if, uh, if this is disabled, you'll just have standard engine braking, whereas when you let off the throttle, regeneration will kick in. Uh, however, if you turn this on, um, regen will kick in when you either pull the brake lever or if you're using variable regen when you push your variable regen lever. Note that if this is on, this does need to be off, otherwise data will not pass between the two. I do not have a regen lever, nor do I like uh, on lever pull regen, so I'm going to turn that back off and re-enable uh, or disable the brake cutouts. So let's say, for instance, you did have a regen lever. If you were to set that up in here, again, off and on there and there, and then you have your brake one live voltage, this may not be what your value is. Uh, however, you can see with a standard brake, it's more like a light switch, you either have full off or full on. And something to note here is if your brake off voltage is lower than your brake live voltage, there will not be any throttle delivery um, or any power delivery to your motor. So what you would do here in, in this instance for tuning a lever region is say, uh, say when you're not pressing it, your value is 0 0.02 like it is here. You would want to go ahead and set this to a slightly higher value, 0 0.1. And let's say you depress your uh, lever all the way, and it is 4.9. You can set this one to the exact value, it's 4.91. And that would be how you would tune a region lever, pretty simple. Moving down, we have minimum region speed. Note this is in KMH, again, pretty self-explanatory. If you're above this speed, regen will work. If you are below this speed, regen will not work. Uh, this is important because you obviously do not want regen um, if you're going zero kmh or else it's gonna be very hard to push your bike. Moving down further, we have our positive ramping uh, for braking. And this basically defines how quickly you reach your maximum regeneration braking. A uh, higher value is going to feel a bit smoother whereas a lower value will be uh, more of an instantaneous uh, instantaneous regen activation. Down from there we have our maximum braking torque. This is a parameter that kind of coincides with our regen ratio here. It's basically the maximum allowable phase current uh, while regenerating. Now in the throttle parameter section we have um, a couple features here. Again we have our throttle real-time voltage very similar to braking where if I twist the throttle this will change. So see how that works. This is another very good, um, a very useful feature for troubleshooting. If you're twisting your throttle and this value isn't changing, you have a broken throttle or a loose connection somewhere, um, and it's just good for general diagnostics. So let's say we want to tune our throttle here. I have a domino throttle, just so you know, so if you have a stock throttle, these values here would not be the same. So the first thing we want to do is deactivate our throttle. We do not want the tire spinning when we do this. Um, and our throttle off voltage is whatever you see up here. Uh, you can set this to the exact value there, and then we'll go down to our full voltage. Now twist the throttle all the way and hold it, and you can see it goes up to 4.94 volts. So we can enter 4.94 there. Moving down, we have our throttle dead band, and what this is is basically how much you have to twist it before the uh, power activates. So. When your throttle real-time voltage reaches this value plus this value, the uh, power to the motor will activate. And then once it reaches that value, you will be demanding maximum torque. So we're going to re-enable our throttle here. Don't want to forget to do that. And verify here that it still works. It's good to go. So uh, moving down, we have throttle positive ramping. This is similar to brake ramping. Um, Basically, these two values um, somewhat coincide. Again, more um, in-depth definitions in the parameter definition section. But the higher this is, the 
uh, the higher this value is, the smoother, um, the more lethargic the throttle will feel uh, when you're twisting it on. And so, um, and then with the negative ramping, the higher this value is, the slower the bike will react when you let off the throttle. Default, we ship our controllers at 30, um, or at least we do now. Anything below five is kind of like a light switch on off. It's generally not very smooth. So we recommend around 30. Rolling down from here, the last two, uh, section here is battery parameters. We have our battery live voltage. So this will be the true reading coming off your battery into the controller. And then below that we have our rated system voltage. Note that these two values should not match um, or in most cases will not match I should say. Uh, this is your nominal voltage here. So uh, a stock Ceron, for example, this would say 60. Or um, if you have an upgraded 72 volt, you would put that there. If you have a 48 volt, that would go there as well. Moving on to the final parameters section, we have the motor parameters. Uh, starting at the top again, we have our motor temp cutoff. Basically, this is the value in degrees Celsius where uh, the controller will start limiting power to the motor. And the goal of this is just to save your motor from burning up. Below that, we have Hall Offset. If you'd like to know more about that, head to Parameter Definitions. This is basically a value that should update automatically when you run uh, calibrations. Speaking of which, we'll do that now. There's a toggle that you need to activate because it's going to tell you uh, when you are running a calibration, the wheel will spin on its own. So it's telling you to put the bike on a stand and be sure that the wheel can freeze spin on its own. We'll hit OK. Ours is up on a stand. So here it's going to uh, give you the prompt to start a motor calibration. Once you are ready, you can hit this and it'll tell you what step one will be. Step one, the motor is simply going to buzz. This would be a good time to place your hand on the bike just to ensure that it's steady on your stand. So we'll begin here. And that just read the resistance and inductance of the motor. And now we are going to find the hall sectors and the hall offset. So we're gonna begin and the wheel will start spinning. There are many reasons that uh, this may fail. Uh, faulty hall sensor, um, bad connections, a damaged motor. Uh, but since we have a healthy KO motor in here, we have our success message. And note here that it says, um, if the performance feels worse, do not save to flash, just restart the bike. The reason for this is you don't wanna be saving um, a bad calibration. Again, this will say failure if it does not complete successfully. So um, it's gonna reload our data here and you can see that all, all of our hall sector values have been read in um, and our hall offset, I believe changed slightly 0.01. I've already ran a calibration, so that should be fairly similar. Uh, moving down, we have our motor type. You only need to change this once when you change the motor since mine's already on the KO motor. I don't need to do this. However, I will show you what that process looks like. So you can click here and we have three options for now. Um, if we make kits for other bikes, uh, if more motors come out for the Suron, they will be added to this list, assuming they're uh, worthy of being used. So we have stock Suron Segway motor. We have the KO motor, which is what I'm running. And then we also have the QS motor, which we've done some testing on in the past. For now, we're running the KO, so we'll leave it on that. And we'll click done. And it says you're about to change your settings to run the KO motor tune. If you are not running this motor, select cancel. We are, so we'll just hit OK. And it's going to let us know that that was successful and that we should run a motor calibration. Since we just did that, um, we do not need to run a motor calibration. And again, uh, when you load in the values each time, this will uh, go away and not say KO motor. But again, just know that if you've changed it once and saved your settings, the values will save. And what this does uh, is it changes some things on the back end. Um, that users do not have access to. Um, one of the main things is the temp sensor. So you'll have a little temp sensor readout on your egg rider, as well as in the dashboard section that calibrates it for each motor. Moving down, uh, we have two values that uh, relate to the PI tuning of the controller. 
Not gonna get super deep into that. There are more definitions in uh, the parameter definition section and you can kind of tweak around with these settings. Note that when you change your motor type, these will automatically set to a baseline value, what I would say. Um, and so just note that whenever you change your motor type, these will change as well. Um, and then you can go ahead and tweak them from there. So we've made some changes here. Uh, what we want to do whenever we make a change is hit save settings. And this is basically going to tell us, do not turn off the bike during saving. Uh, do not walk away from the bike. Don't exit out of the app. Don't do any of that. That would be like uh, turning off your PC during an update or something similar. So we're going to hit OK and it's going to go through its save process. Note that the save and update process is all one feature now. So we've also just updated our controller at the same time. And it's going to say uh, save settings results. It was successful and that our settings have been saved to our memory. That's great. So we'll just hit OK. And we are done with that. Um, so I'm just going to turn off the bike and it's going to let us know that we've disconnected here. If you want to connect again, you can just head back to the Bluetooth uh, devices section, rescan, and there will be the bike. So the last thing we're going to show here is the live dashboard. And I need to make sure the rotation lock is off. And that is the new dashboard. A little bit different of a uh, way to choose your device now. You just hit the Bluetooth button here and it's going to scan. Again, eBike shows up and we'll click that and it'll head back and load in all of our data. So a um, couple things here, you can choose between mile per hour and kilometers per hour and that value will save. Uh, since I'm in the US, I'm gonna run miles per hour. And then we've got a couple things. We've got our real-time battery voltage with a scale here. So this would be fully charged. If it's over here, that would be empty. We have our speedometer, our RPM there is a tiny value. And then we have our DC current. Um, in the future, you can swipe over. There will be a new update where we will have like a, a maximum value traction, data logging, um, or not traction, tracking section, data logging, where you can uh, just kind of see these values represented in a more just basic way uh, and their maximum values. Down here we have our motor temp. As this increases, it'll turn red. Same with our controller temp here. And then right in the middle, we have our regeneration current. So if I go ahead here and twist the throttle, you can see how this changes. And uh, yeah, there you go. It's pretty simple. Uh, basically, this speed is not like GPS speed or anything like that. So do ensure that you have your wheel circumference set correctly in the Egg Rider app to make sure that this value is correct. Um, it also will leave little markers at your maximum value. So I hit about 20 there. And then down here, since I'm on a, a stand, it's not gonna pull very much current, uh, but that will also mark your maximum value. So that's basically everything we got. It's definitely been a long journey. Uh, the app's been a labor of love. Uh, it's been quite the mission learning all this coding stuff. Um, and as I mentioned, if there are any bugs, do not hesitate to send us an email, let us know. We'll try and get them fixed up. Um, and again, we can't make a video every time we update this app, but the parameters definition section as well as the app section on our website should give you all of the information you need regarding new features. Um, so head there first before you shoot us an email. That's all we got for today. Thank you very much for watching and have a nice day.